Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on COX enzyme inhibitors part 3, COX2 specific inhibitors. Introduction COX2 specific inhibitors are anti inflammatory analgesics that reduces prostaglandin synthesis by specifically inhibiting COX2 with little or no effect on COX1. They were developed as an alternative to traditional NSAIDs with the aim to avoid COX-1 mediated side effects such as peptic ulceration and platelet inhibition. The relative specificity for COX-1 and COX-2 varies between drugs. Agents that are available orally include celecoxib and atoricoxib and parenterally includes paracoxib. Mechanism of action of COX-2 inhibitors is similar to that of traditional NSAIDs COX-1 and COX-2 enzymes have very similar active sites and catalytic properties. However, COX-2 has a larger potential binding site because of a secondary internal pocket. By exploiting the differences between the binding sites of COX-1 and COX-2, this has allowed the design of drugs to target predominantly COX-2. COX-2 is induced at sites of inflammation and trauma, producing prostaglandins, COX-2 specific NSAIDs inhibits this process. Since COX-2 is an important constitutive enzyme in the CNS, including the spinal cord, COX-2 is inhibited at these sites as well. Pharmacodynamics of COX-2 inhibitors Analgesia Systemic reviews and meta-analysis indicate similar efficacy for COX-2 inhibitors when compared to conventional NSAIDs in both acute post-operative pain and chronic conditions such as osteoarthritis. Gastrointestinal effects. One in 1,200 patients receiving chronic NSAID treatment for more than two months die from gastroduodenal related complications. COX-1 isozyme is the predominant cyclooxygenase found in the gastric mucosa and is responsible for the production of prostanoids that serve various functions to protect the gastric mucosa, such as reduce acid secretion stimulating mucus secretion, increasing production of mucosal phospholipids and bicarbonate, and regulating mucosal blood flow. Specific COX-2 inhibitors have less effect on these processes. The efficacy of gastric protection is related to the degree of COX-2 specificity. Treatment with specific COX-2 inhibitors up to 3 months is associated with a significant reduction in the incidence of gastroduodenal ulceration. However, this gastrointestinal protective effect is reduced during prolonged treatment and in patients taking low-dose aspirin. Hematological effects COX-2 specific inhibitors have very little adverse effect on platelet function. When compared with non-specific NSAIDs, COX-2 specific inhibitors has less risk of perioperative or gastrointestinal bleeding. Cardiovascular effects Compared with traditional NSAIDs and placebos, some large long-term studies of COX-2 inhibitors have found an increased risk of cardiovascular events such as myocardial infarction and stroke. Some COX-2-specific inhibitors have been withdrawn due to this increased risk such as rofecoxib. Thus, COX-2-specific inhibitors should not be used in patients with ischemic heart disease or cerebrovascular disease. Their use in other patients should be guided by individual risk assessment. Studies have also found an increased risk of cardiovascular events when some of these drugs are used after coronary artery bypass surgery. An increased cardiovascular risk with some general NSAIDs may be due to COX-2 inhibition. COX-2 is present in vessel endothelium where it produces prostacyclines that inhibit platelet function and causes vasodilation. Inhibition of COX-2 at this site thus increases the likelihood of thrombus formation and occlusion of blood vessels, and therefore myocardial infarction and stroke. Studies have also found a decreased cardiovascular risk with certain general NSAIDs. General NSAIDs inhibit COX-2 and also COX-1, which results in significant impairment of platelet function. For example, using low-dose aspirin, the combined effect of some general NSAIDs is such that the risk of adverse cardiovascular and cerebrovascular events may be in fact decreased rather than increased. Renal effects COX-2 is normally found in the renal cortex. It is therefore inhibited 
both by conventional NSAIDs and COX-2 specific inhibitors. This may result in peripheral edema, hypertension, oliguria, and decreased creatinine clearance. Respiratory function. COX-2 specific inhibitors do not trigger bronchospasm. This table summarizes what has been discussed comparing non-selective NSAIDs and COX-2 specific inhibitors. Salicosib. Salicosib is a selective COX-2 inhibitor the inhibition of COX-2 is reversible, unlike the inhibition of COX-1 by aspirin, which is rapid and irreversible. Indications for salicosib includes to treat acute mild to moderate pain for conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, and dysmenorrhea. Salicosib has similar efficacy to other NSAIDs in the treatment of pain. Preparations includes 100 or 200 mg capsules, each 100 mg and 200 mg capsule contains 149.7 mg and 49.8 mg lactose monohydrate respectively. Dosage The dose for salicosib is typically 200 mg OD or BD and can be given without regard to the timing of meals. The shortest duration possible and lowest effective daily dose should be used as the cardiovascular risk of selective COX-2 inhibitors may increase with dose and duration of exposure. Salicosib is not approved for use in patients under 18 years of age. Pharmacokinetics Salicosib is readily absorbed after oral administration with a peak plasma concentration achieved within 1-3 to three hours. Plasma protein binding is high at more than 90%. Salicosib is extensively metabolized in the liver by cytochrome P450 enzymes and excreted in the feces and urine. Salicosib has a half-life of 11 hours. Contraindications for salicosib include severe hepatic or renal disease, use with caution in patients who are allergic to sulfonamides, aspirin, and other non-selective NSAIDs. Salicosib is pregnancy category B3. For other contraindications, kindly refer to the video on COX enzyme inhibitors part 1. Adverse effects of salicosib Salicosib is associated with less GI bleeding and dyspepsia than other NSAIDs when used without concomitant aspirin therapy. This benefit is lost when aspirin is added to salicosib therapy. As COX-2 facilitates peptic ulcer healing, patients with peptic ulcers should avoid COX-2 inhibitors. Risk for cardiovascular events as mentioned. Inhibitors of CYP2C9 may increase serum levels of salicosib. Examples of inhibitors of CYP2C9 includes fluconazole and fluvastatin. Regarding other adverse effects of salicosib, kindly refer to COX enzyme inhibitors part 2, adverse effects of NSAIDs. Paracosib. This is a water-soluble and injectable prodrug of valdecosib. Paracosib is licensed for short-term treatment of post-operative pain. It can be used perioperatively when patients are unable to take oral medications as it is administered intravenously. Preparation It is white to off-white preservative-free lyophilized powder in a single-use vial. It should be reconstituted with 2 mL of sodium chloride solution 0.9% or a suitable alternative prior to injection. Paracosib should not be mixed with other medicinal products, lactated ringers, 5% glucose in lactated ringers, and sterile water. Paracosib can be given IV or IM. IV bolus injection may be given rapidly and directly into a vein or into an existing IV line. Intramuscular injections should be given slowly and deeply into the muscle. Pharmacokinetics of paracosib. Paracosib is converted rapidly and completely, more than 95%, to valdecosib by enzymatic hydrolysis in the liver. Maximal blood levels are achieved within 30 to 60 minutes. Steady state was achieved within 4 days with BD dosing. Plasma half-life for paracosib is 22 minutes, for valdecosib is 8 hours. Volume of distribution 55 liters, plasma protein binding 98%. Metabolism Valdecosib is converted to various inactive metabolites in the liver via CYP450 dependent and independent pathways. Glucuronide conjugates of the sulfonamide moiety are formed. 
Elimination Felder Cossip is eliminated via hepatic metabolism with less than 5% of the dose excreted unchanged in the urine. No unchanged paracosib is detected in the urine and only a trace amount in feces is detected. Plasma clearance for valdocosib is about 6 liters per hour regardless whether the patient is undergoing hemodialysis. Recommended dose for single dose 40 mg IV or IM. Dose adjustment is required for elderly female patients weighing less than 50 kg. The recommended dose for these patients is 20 mg. Multiple doses. In a study of post-operative pain following abdominal hysterectomy, Following a single dose of 40 mg IV paracosib, the magnitude of the analgesic effect was comparable to that of Ketorolac 30 mg IV. 40 mg was more efficacious than 20 mg of paracosib. IV paracosib 40 mg BD or PRN was comparable to 20 mg QID or PRN, and both those regimens were similar in effectiveness to Ketorolac 30 mg QID or PRN. In a study of post-operative pain following knee or hip replacement surgery, 40 mg was more efficacious than 20 mg of paracosib. IV paracosib 40 mg BD or PRN was comparable to 20 mg QID or PRN, and both those regimens were similar in effectiveness to ketorolac 15 mg QID or PRN. Experience is limited with paracosib treatment for more than two days. Pre-operative administration of paracosib Compared to placebo, administration of single doses of IV paracosib 20 to 40 mg 30 to 45 minutes prior to surgery significantly delayed development of post-operative pain. As measured by the proportion of patients not requiring supplemental pain medication at 6, 12 and 24 hours post-surgery in patients undergoing oral surgery and orthopedic surgery. Onset of analgesia for paracosib is 7 to 14 minutes and reaches a peak effect within 2 hours. Duration of analgesia For single dose, the duration of analgesia was dose and clinical pain model dependent and ranges from 6 to more than 24 hours. Analgesic response to paracosib was independent of age, gender and severity of pain. Contraindications for COX-2 inhibitors are mentioned in previous sections. Paracosib has not been studied in patients under 18 years old and its use is not recommended for these patients. Paracosib is pregnancy category C. Kindly refer to the video COX Enzyme Inhibitors Part 1 for further details on contraindications of COX-2 inhibitors. Adverse Effects Regarding CVS safety, a minimum of 3 days treatment with paracosib and subsequent use of valdocosib for a total duration of 10 to 14 days has been associated with an increased incidence of cardiovascular adverse events in patients undergoing coronary artery bypass surgery in two separate clinical trials. Regarding non-cardiac controlled trials, where the majority of patients were treated for two days, patients treated with paracosib did not experience an increased risk of cardiovascular adverse events compared to placebo. For other adverse effects, kindly refer to the video COX Enzyme Inhibitors Part 2 adverse effects of NSAIDs. These are my references. Thank you.